So uh, Angelman syndrome is a neurodevelopmental disorder, which means that it affects brain develop it, development. Um, and, uh, and so this disorder, um, kids who have it, they, they uh, miss major milestones. So they have developmental delay. Um, they'll have cognitive impairment. Um, they uh, almost all of the time um, speak very few, if any, words. Uh, about 80% of the kids with this disorder have seizures. Um, they experience other issues such as um, they don't sleep very well. Uh, they have motor skills impairment, so they, they move with ataxia, um, kind of a wide spaced gait with their hands held up a little bit. Uh, and then there are some behavioral issues uh, that kind of look like anxiety. Um, those are probably the biggest features of Angelman syndrome. So again, it's a problem of brain development that, that causes these symptoms. Um, and then it, um, it's caused by the loss of mom's copy of one gene uh, called UBE3A. The most common way is, is that um, kids will have a deletion um, on mom's copy of chromosome 15. Um, and this deletion occurs because uh, two little pieces of uh, DNA that um, are repeated amongst each other, they overlap in a bad way and that causes um, a region in between to, to be deleted and that's the most common cause. And so um, that occurs um, at random. And there's, there's not anything that increases your risk of having that happen. Um, another way that it can happen is, is the UBE3A gene itself can sustain an error or a mutation. Um, another way is you can inherit both of your chromosomes 15 from dad which means you're missing mom's copy of chromosome 15. And then the final way to end up with that disorder is um, an imprinting defect, which means mom's copy of chromosome 15 behaves as if it were inherited from dad. And so the diagnostic odyssey, the first challenge is, is to recognize that a child would have Angelman syndrome or might have Angelman syndrome and to start looking for the various genetic uh, changes that could cause the disorder. Um, what ends up happening a lot of times is um, parents and their physicians realize that a child's missing their ma major milestones. So like they don't roll, roll over on time. They don't sit up when they're supposed to. They're not babbling. And that'll prompt um, often a, a referral to genetics or the pediatrician will do this themselves. If they suspect Angelman syndrome um, right off the bat, they'll do an Angelman syndrome specific test, which might be for DNA methylation. Um, more commonly, we're seeing now that um, they'll often do uh, a chromosomal microarray, which will ask, are there pieces of DNA that are missing or uh, duplicated um, in the individual? And, and that will detect Angelman syndrome as well as several other disorders. Um, kids that in which Angelman syndrome strongly suspected but um, they don't have the deletion, they'll end up following up with other types of genetic tests like whole exome sequencing, which will look at the DNA bases um, in all of the genes that code proteins. And this too can also recognize Angelman-like disorders. In some cases, uh, they'll have to look for whether or not both copies of chromosome 15 were inherited from mom or from dad, and they'll use specific DNA markers that can test for that. So it can be, quite a long diagnostic odyssey if the most common causes um, aren't, aren't the reason for Angelman syndrome in a child.